something fun. Illegal <laughs> gambling. Yeah. <laughs> is wagering 50 bucks with the hopes of winning back 1 million just for selecting a combination of NFL players for your own fantasy league considered gambling. Online fantasy companies such as FuelDuel and DraftKings have faced some obstacles of late, including lawsuits claiming false advertising and potentially illegal gambling. So how do these companies affect legal casino sports betting, and what is the risk for hacking through these sites? Joining me right now, Fox Business is Adam Shapiro and BetBomb.com co-founder and COO Todd Drolette. Good to have both you guys here. Uh, Adam, I'm going to start with you. Okay. From Clinton to gambling, that, that's actually not such a wild transition not a big if you transition. think about it. Um, <laughs> but, but what's going on here? It, 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 the issue is it's illegal, no. but people are doing it anyway. No, it's not illegal. And it's very not. simply, I'm going to keep it very simple. In 2006, Congress made online gambling illegal, but there's a loophole in the law which specifically permits fantasy sports gaming. Mm -hmm. And there are differences. We could get into technicalities about this. The bottom line is Congress does permit fantasy sports gaming. The reason we're talking about it is Frank Ballone, who is the ranking member on a committee in Congress, is calling for hearings because he says it's the same as gambling. But the, the Congress passed a law which permits this, and there are differences between gambling and fantasy sports gaming. There what really are some are. of those differences, Todd? Uh, oh. Todd? Uh, so typically with fan... Yeah, I heard you. Trish, can you hear me? I got gotcha. you. Uh, fan... Okay, so fantasy sports, you pick individual players and you create your own team. It's a skill-based game. Uh, illegal sports gambling, which it is not, uh, is pretty much predicated on chance. It's, I think the Steelers are going to win today. Um, they're completely different. The carve out is very specific in the law, and uh, that's why companies like mine, BetBomb.com, and FanDuel and DraftKings feel confident uh, in what we're doing. That you know, you're basically, you're you're part of that loophole. Um, but do, do we really need to have loopholes? I mean, if if people are doing this and, and they're betting on you know who's going to win the Super Bowl, and let's face it, we've all participated in that in the office place from. You but know, this isn't betting on who's going to win the Super Bowl. It's betting on the fantasy team, right? But, but, but I, I'm, I'm taking it to another level here, a bigger issue. Should we just say, you know what, it's happening, um, let's tax it, let's regulate it, let's make it all legal? Uh, well, it is legal. I mean, it's not illegal right now to do this. And the winnings, when, when you pay the $25 entry fee in order to build a fantasy team, mm -hmm. you're entering a pool by which, by the players you've selected for your fantasy team, under the guideline of the law, if your players have the best points and you win, you get a prize that's established before the game begins. That's totally legal. And then you pay taxes on that prize. Are people getting psyched about doing this this fall? Now that Tom I, I Brady's back in action, it. Todd? <laughs> 100 percent. And what to the earlier question, the illegal sports betting market's a three hundred and eighty billion dollar a year market um, and fantasy sports, uh, FanDuel and okay. DraftKings are estimating about three billion in revenue. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Adam, good to see you.